So, you have a big dream of becoming an astronaut and exploring the galaxy. You want to see amazing planets and witness colours that blow your mind. But what would colours look like when you get there? Would they be the same as on Earth, or would they be completely different? Well, according to some experts, it depends on your brain. Literally. You see, your brain is very clever at adapting to different light situations. For example, when you put on a pair of shady sunglasses, everything looks funky at first, but then it looks normal again. This also happens naturally as you grow old. The lenses of your eyes become more yellow as you age, but you don't see colours that way because your brain fixes it for you. But how would your brain deal with colours in a totally new environment? One that has nothing in common with Earth? Well, Michael Webster, a scientist, claims that whatever the average colour is, that's going to end up looking grey. That's right, your brain would basically say, screw it, and try to make everything more boring. So if you went to Mars, the red planet would not look red to you over time. Instead, it would look like a lame shade of brown or grey, and the orange Martian sky would start to look more blue. Not the same blue as Earth's, but a lot less orange than it looks to us now. Well, that sounds pretty disappointing. Imagine spending millions of dollars and years of training to go to Mars, only to find out that it looks like a dull desert with a boring sky. What a rip-off! But hold on, there's more. Your brain doesn't only mess with hue, it also messes with intensity. On a planet with a boring natural colour palette, your brain would become sensitive to very subtle changes in shade. Over time, you would see faded colours as more vivid and vice versa. So if you lived in a super colourful environment, like a rainbow planet or something, you would actually dull down that knob and see everything as less colourful. And if you came back to Earth after living on a planet for a while, your brain would have to readjust again and everything would look weird for some time. Isn't that awesome? Well, no, it's not. But what if there was a way to avoid this headache? What if there was a gadget that magically filtered the environment for you and made it look like it was on Earth? Well, there might be. Daria Akainak, a genius engineer and oceanographer, and her lab are working on a similar problem. But her research stays a little closer to home. It focuses on marine environments rather than outer space. Akainak co-created a computer algorithm called See Through which colour fixes images and videos taken underwater to make them look as if they were taken on land. The first step is to get rid of water's annoying blue filter. That's right, Akainak and her team found a way to make the underwater world look less like a smurf village and more like a normal place. You see, water is a sneaky substance that filters out other colours of visible light and makes everything look blue. That's why even pure bodies of water would look blue on another planet but water is not pure. It's full of salt particles, green phytoplankton, sediments and other stuff that bounces light particles around. For that reason, objects appear different colours depending on the depth and type of water they are viewed through. A Kynax model accounts for these factors to make images look more like they were taken on land. So if you had some idea about the composition of an alien planet's atmosphere and oceans, you could theoretically use that info to create a magic filter that fixed the environment's colours, which could be installed in the visor of a spacesuit. You could see the alien world as if it was on Earth, without having to deal with your brain's nonsense. But until humans actually go to another planet, we have no clue how it would feel to adjust to an alien colour palette. But once again, the deep sea might give us a hint. A Kynak once went to underwater depths past 100 feet, or 30 meters, deep enough for all of the red light to be gone. Everything looked yellow, not blue, probably because she was trying to make up for the lack of red. But it looked insane, like you're in a giant lemonade or something. But don't worry, a Kynak didn't lose her mind in the lemonade ocean. She was able to return to the surface and see the normal colors again. And that's the thing, our brains are very good at adapting to different color environments, even if they look weird at first. So maybe, just maybe, if we ever get to visit another planet with a different color palette, we wouldn't need any shiny filters or algorithms to see it as it is. Maybe we'll just need some patience and curiosity to let our brains do their magic and adapt to the new environment. Now you may be asking yourself, why do we care about how colours look on other planets? Well, apart from indulging our nerdy curiosity and sense of wonder, there are some practical reasons as well. For example, if we ever want to colonise Mars or explore other worlds, we need to know how the environment will change our vision and perception. We also need to know how to communicate with other intelligent beings. 
if they exist, and how they might see us and our colours. You know, just in case they want to be friends or foes, or even worse, fashion critics. But before we get into that, let's talk about how we see colours in the first place. You see, colour is not a property of objects, but rather a product of our brains. Our eyes have three types of cone cells that detect different wavelengths of light – red, green and blue. These signals are then processed by our brains to create the colours we perceive. But different animals have different types of cone cells, and therefore different colour visions. Dogs have only two types of cone cells, blue and yellow. They can't see red or green, so they probably see the world in shades of blue, yellow and grey. Cats have the same two types of cone cells as dogs, but they also have a special layer in their eye that reflects light back to the retina, enhancing their night vision. They can see better in the dark than we can, but their colours are also less vivid. Birds, on the other hand, have four types of cone cells – red, green, blue and ultraviolet. They can see colours that we can't even imagine, like ultraviolet patterns on flowers and feathers. Some birds can even see polarised light, which helps them navigate by the sun. Reptiles and fish also have four types of cone cells, but they are different from birds. They can see infrared light, which is emitted by warm-blooded animals and objects. I know it might sound crazy, but there is no objective reality when it comes to seeing things. Yes, members of the same species may interpret the reality in the same way, but different species live in different realities than us. They're not looking at the same universe as we do, at least not completely. So what does this mean for our interplanetary adventures? Well, it means that we might encounter some surprises when we land on another planet. Depending on the atmosphere and the surface of the planet, the colours we see might be very different from what we're used to on Earth. And if there are any aliens living there, they might have a completely different colour vision than ours. Imagine you met an alien who sees colours that you can't. How would you communicate with them? Would you try to explain what red or blue is? Or would you have a bigger problem and wet yourself right away? Well, let's hope they don't find that offensive. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at an example of a planet with a very different colour scheme than Earth. Let's say we visit a planet with a thick purple atmosphere and a green ocean. The purple light would filter out most of the other colours making everything look purple or grey to us. But if the aliens living there had cone cells that were sensitive to purple light, they might see a rich variety of colours that we couldn't detect. They might also have cone cells that were sensitive to other wavelengths of light that were invisible to us. This means that their wavelength range might be completely different from ours, and we might not be able to see them at all. Imagine looking at Mars and seeing a barren desert, but actually, there's a civilization there that's outside of our vision. Sounds crazy, right? But it's not impossible. Let's not get carried away by conspiracy theories, though. This is just a hypothetical scenario to show you how color vision can vary across the universe. Speaking of things that are outside of our vision, did you know that there's a black hole that is millions of light years away and it's devouring a star on a regular basis? Every time it strikes, it consumes a part of the star that is equal to three times the mass of our planet. Yeah, you heard me right, three times the mass of our home. And you can watch it right now by clicking here. You will also see a gamma ray burst that is 400 quadrillion times brighter than the sun. But that's not all, I have one more thing to tell you and it might sound very cheesy, but it's very important for the growth of the channel. Are you ready? Well, here it is. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time with more awesome space news.